So Alexander, tell me about your experience with Community Works Institute. Um, it was a great week, and we learned a lot about uh, addressing social justice issues as educators uh, with service learning and doing different things to make that happen in a school step. So one of the things, one of the activities that we did was uh, to learn a little bit about collaborative ethnography. And we actually went into the downtown Los Angeles area uh, to find out about downtown LA, but to use the process of ethnography to really hear the voices of the people that were in the community. So I thought that was very interesting because I think when you first do it, you're a little bit afraid <laughs> sure. of how you're going to do that. Uh, but I, I found there was like two levels of experience. Right. Number one was me as the ethnographer coming in to find out a story. That is a skill in itself. So you identify as an ethnographer in the process. Yes. And I, we, we could see that as we started, it was a little bit unfamiliar, it was a little bit of scary, you know, doing something different that you've never done before, but how do you get stories? It's by talking to people. Sure. It's by dialogue. Yeah. And so you kind of have to step out of the box and, and do that, and so that's what we had to do. So being comfortable with approaching people uh, and seeing who was receptive to having that dialogue. Sure, in a very you. crowded urban environment yeah. with a team of how many, how many educators were, are there total and how many were on each team? There was a total of 30, so, 30. and then we were, we broke up into about teams of like four to five, and so we decided how we were going to do that. So I think even as a group, we had different approaches, Yeah. Um, but some people in the group were more comfortable to speak, and some people were kind of a little bit more hesitant, but I think when you do it as a group, you yeah. feel more comfortable because someone is with you, you know? So tell me a little bit about what you were asked do? What was it that you went out to do? I think the, the assignment was to find out about why people were in LA and how had Los Angeles changed from their experience. Mm. So we all started at the same place, but I think as, as our group had done it, um, it depended who you asked. So sometimes, you know, there was a lot of <laughs> so sure. they had nothing to share really, you know, we were, they were just there for a day or two. So it was really, you weren't getting very much. But then you start seeing people who you normally would just kind of ignore ah. and not talk to or actually try to avoid, Sure. right? Right. Uh, so I think the first person that we talked to was uh, an elderly man who was playing an accordion at the side. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you normally would just look, maybe you'll drop a coin in and sure. then move on your way. But then we decided, well, I, I wanted to approach him because I had played the accordion. So, you know, I think we find like found connecting a sense of commonality thing that to approach that person. Yeah. yeah. So then that's how the conversation started. So we started asking him where he was from, et cetera, et cetera. And we started to know a little bit about him, his life. But in the end, you saw that this is a guy who's obviously struggling to survive because he's playing on the sidewalk sure. for an elderly man that oh, age oh to gosh. be trying to make money. He'd be there from 12 to 5 every day, he said. So, I mean, he, he may not have said, I'm struggling, but you obviously when you look at the whole big picture, absolutely, and then you see yourself at that age, would you ever think that you were going to, sure. to be in some of that? So I think that was very yeah, good time. Right. But, you know, we, we kind of backed off a little bit because I think our questioning wasn't that great, and, or maybe we just felt like we were kind of being too intrusive. Sure, right. well, he wasn't ready to share. So. Yeah. So then we kind of just moved on to thank you, and then, you know, we went on our way. But so, this man had been a witness to the life around him. Yeah. Every day, yeah. every day, every yeah. day, watching the space change. Yeah. Or even, I mean, how he got there, or how long uh, was it, and what was he doing there uh, sure. now? Okay. You know, he, he had only come to LA for like 12 years because his family was here. But mm -hmm. this is where he obviously seems like he's going to stay sure. until, until the end. Yeah. And then, you know, we were walking around, and, and then the second person we saw was a woman who was lighting the cigarette of a guy who was walking past, and she seemed very conversive. 
you know? So I, she looks like someone that might want to say something or share her story and not be too intimidated by us. So we just went up to her and just started a conversation and we found out more about her. So, you know, she was born in Chicago. She, um, she lived in LA, but then her parents moved to San Jose and then she came back and then I asked her, why did you come back to LA? And then she said, uh, well, you know, this is, everyone knows LA is where you want to be bad. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, and this is where it's all happening. You know, so it was like, whoa. Awesome, you know? I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> she had a different perspective. Her perspective was, a lot more foreigners with communicable diseases. Oh wow. So then you can see a lot of her answers were from from her experience of men. Uh huh. Wow. So then you start kind of seeing maybe how did she survive being here? Why what made her come to LA? Well sure. she apparently grew up in like the foster home system and her mom had come here with a with a record deal like it was hoping to happen, but it never did. So you kind of see some kind of disappointments and a lot, again, struggle again to survive, but we kind of construed that maybe she was working the streets. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So there's one of millions and millions of stories around you. Yeah. Just one of the layers of the space, yeah. a perspective. And you went on to discover more and more perspectives of the same place. Yeah. And what was your ultimate discovery? What was it that you your, your ultimate one? Well, I think that it, I think it got better when we went to the third person who, her name was Rocia, who actually owned one of the chili stands in the Grand Central Market. Oh. And her dad had owned that 30 years before. So it was like one of these original stands, but then it's like surrounded by all these brand new... Sign of the times. Yeah. yeah. So then you start asking her, like, um, why are you still here? You know, or what do you think you of this change? Sure. It's like, oh, there's lots of beer everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there aren't families coming anymore like mm. they used to. Mm. And then I asked her, well, why are you still here then? And, you know, then she said that all her neighbors were asked to either leave or they raised the rent so that they couldn't afford it anymore. And, you know, and then you ask her, well, what about you? Did anyone ask? No, like, and you're just like, thank God, like nobody really? came to me and asked me to leave. Oh so you kind of wonder, was that intentional? Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I think our group had kind of seen that here's someone who's hanging on to the past, right? But will she be able to survive? And we asked her, do you think you're going to be here forever? You know, like how long you yeah. want to stay here? She was kind of like, we're going to stay as long as we can. I can't look to the future, but I just take it day by day. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's, it's a story of strength and struggle, survival. Yeah. But then it's a kind of sad thing for me to see that you cannot look and hope for that future. Do you know what I mean? You're just taking it day by day. Sure. So I think that was very telling yeah. in terms of how things were changing around them. And they have no power to really have any say in right. that. They're just kind of like, someone else is controlling that and they just have to do what they can. So that, that was like some of the themes that we saw in, in our ethnography. When the other groups shared what they got from the ethnography, um, they came up with different themes than us. So it was interesting that we, we were in the same block, same area, but they had heard different stories and different themes, maybe from not only how they questioned, but maybe even their own interpretation, I guess, you know, of, oh, of what they of what they heard. But sometimes it seemed like some of us even had the same people that we interviewed, but I noticed that what they got out of that was a little bit different from what we got out of, you know what I mean? So I think even just the kind of questionings and the quality of the questioning yeah. really changed what they got in terms of what they received and what they learned. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that a collaborative, uh, how do you say, a collaborative form happens because I think just you as the interviewer has a lot to do with what comes out of that and 
if you want to get a real perspective, then you're going to have to get more viewpoints than just your sure. own. Right. Uh, right. So that's what I think basically that we got a lot. Of, uh, that's what we got out of it. Um, I'm a local person from Los Angeles, you know, but many of our classmates were people from out of town, and this is the first time they came to Los Angeles. So wow. what they knew of Los Angeles was what they saw from TV, Hollywood, and yeah. their whole stereotype of LA. Uh, but to actually come down to the space of actually talking to people mm -hmm. gave them a completely different perspective of what LA really was about. Yeah. Um, what were some of the things that you felt like, you know, one or two perspectives that you were surprised by that you're like, wow, you got that out of this? Being yeah. not from LA, were there any sort of perspectives that you were surprised at? Maybe they see all the glitz and glamour of LA, yeah. but to actually see that people are really struggling. Yes, exactly. I don't yeah. think they ever thought about that or even realized that, you know? Mm -hmm. So so there's something completely different that when you're here trying to reach out and talk to people, yeah, you're yeah. going to get a whole completely different view and story of, exactly. of what's going on here. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of bright lights and things that we see from Hollywood. Yes. And what people see from around the world. But I think when they come here, they realize after the experience, especially doing that ethnography, that there's real oh, issues, yeah. real social justice yeah. issues that, that people in this town really are, are experiencing mm -hmm. that need to be addressed so right right how do you feel that this work is going to influence you know, i think i think the the importance of dialogue mm -hmm. and i think when we 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 are learning about how to serve but how to serve with reciprocity mm -hmm. hearing the student voice or the community voice not our voice sure and what we want to see happen so I think that really changed things to say I need to be more of a listener uh, and yes. see what they need or, or what they're saying and then incorporate that voice into the classroom. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Sure, yeah. Uh, even I mean, if, if it true, is... True community work is rooted in, in empathy. Yes. Then how do you develop empathy but through that sort of dialogue of understanding the layers of the space and, and the... Um, the diversity of perspectives that exists just within this space yeah. and to discover that through dialogue be able to take that back is a real real experience yeah. physical mental spiritual experience. yeah but i think even as teachers and educators who have always been the adults in the classroom who are controlling everything mm -hmm. structuring everything this is what we're going to do this is what you're going to do i think it kind of really made us feel that sometimes we need to let go and that we need to kind of let things be more organic mm -hmm. and kind of uh, let the students kind of discover what is wrong and let, and let and them learn take from the each lead. other. Yeah. Because there's yeah. a lot of learning that can happen amongst them, not yeah. just between the teacher and the student. Not so much to, to yeah. be really truly student centered. Uh, yeah. And so we, I think I realized that this ethnography, there's a lot of communication skills that could be taught. Yeah through doing something like this. Like I think we shelter our kids too much in the classroom mm -hmm. and we do role plays and things that seem very, I mean, they're good for practicing certain skills, but they're not real. But I think when they start learning how to speak to other people, because that's what, in the ethnography, you kind of start learning how to approach someone. Because you can't do it the same way with each person that you right. come to. I think you start learning those nuances, those, we call them soft skills now, but yeah. it's really like, those things you, you I call do by intuition. practice. <laughs> like yeah. learning to trust our intuition and our ability to um, think beyond just the rational part, but thinking with our heart, yeah. using other parts of our body to feel and learn, um, and then understanding what that means when I feel that, oh, that's okay, yeah. or it's not. Yeah. And that that can be infused into learning and discovery. That's interesting. But How do you feel as, as a science teacher that dialogue that you learned in, in working in downtown in the ethnography and then sort of that idea of dialogue and taking that back to the classroom. How do you see yourself applying that in your specific work? I think because if I take the approach of more project-based learning, mm. more action-oriented approach to learning, uh, that if we want, we always want to say, 
We want our students to be 21st century thinkers, critical mm. thinkers, problem solvers. How is that going to happen? Yeah. It's going to happen because they need to be observant. They need to be aware of what's going on. And it's not because I'm telling them mm -hmm. what is wrong, but they need to see it. Like, you know? Um, yeah. So I feel like if I take more of a project based approach to learning, that there is a problem and you need to solve it. How are you going to solve that? What are the solutions? But the problems need to be based on what is needed, not what you think needs to happen. Sure. So if, if it is something like, even at our school site, what is the problem? Well, they need to dialogue. Maybe ask mm -hmm. fellow students or teachers, maybe on a certain issue. You know what I mean? Like once they start to ask those questions, they're going to start seeing this is a kind of a need or a problem that we have at our school. Yeah. Maybe this is something that we can approach through, I teach like STEM, for example, through sure. the engineering design process. We will identify the problem, we'll research it, we'll brainstorm ideas, mm -hmm. we'll test those, evaluate, and we'll keep doing that until sure. we find our solution, and then we'll share that, what we right. learned through reflection. Yeah. So that's how I see, it's like using the ethnography to really understand what are the community needs or the problems that we want to identify mm -hmm. in that whole step. So that's exactly. That's and that we can't, do. we're not going to solve the issues we're trying to solve by using the same formula. So we have to be innovative, creative, we have to be, we have to have great foresight and all of that can be practiced through create creativity, yeah. through creation, through yeah. project-based learning and through building like confidence and, and using those muscles. Yeah. But ultimately, the arts are rooted in practice, in working towards innovation. Yeah. That's got to be a foundation for all the studies. Yeah. That's fascinating. That's I've, I've kind of learned how I think arts and science are very much, mm -hmm. kind of have the same end goal. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're working through different mediums, but you kind of have that same process. When I heard about the work at Spark and how they're doing ethnography to see what the community needs are and then they do this whole process to to do you know what I mean it kind of reminded me of that's the collaborative approach that we try to do in science mm -hmm. as well yeah so you know if I could integrate arts with science yes that's, that's absolutely it. as a way of reflection mm -hmm. and expressing what they learn that is that is what I and think. And then to be able to apply it to the world. Yeah. But then we talked a little earlier about science and empathy. And it's like we're building empathy and to build, to create, or not to create, but to nurture empathic scientists who have great pa compassion, not only for people, but for the environment. Yes. We need empathic science. <laughs> we need an, an, more of an empathic approach to everything if we're going to survive in our cities and in our world. So. That's really great work, that you can take what you learned and apply it to a science. I think, as you said, maybe we shouldn't be using the word art, or maybe we shouldn't be using yeah. any subject, because maybe that just narrows us at that point. But right. from a humanistic right. point of view, as you said, use the word human. The humanities. Yes, the humanities. Because yeah. uh, then it becomes more yeah. holistic, I think. Because if you use the term art, many of you know the, the, uh, the school administrators will just immediately think of crafts, drawing, and extracurricular mm -hmm. and a subject that exists separate from all the other ones mm -hmm. when in reality it's a foundation for everything. Yeah. We need creative mathematicians, scientists, uh, social scientists, <laughs> uh, and even innovative artists. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all of yeah. that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, it was great learning about your work. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Thank you.